Hello, everyone. This is Zami Eccles Irwin from FilmFestivalCircuit.com and the director of the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. Right now, we're gearing up for our fall 2024 uh, event, which is going to take place on October 17th at the Clinton Street Theater in Portland, Oregon. It is going to be a day of networking, refreshments, and lots of film screenings on a great street in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and to prepare this event, we have been talking with some of our participating filmmakers. So today, we're talking to Michael Ronley, who is one of the co-directors behind the film The Need. Michael, thank you so much for talking with me today. You're welcome, Ziami. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so uh, you you've you're in the film community. You've made quite a lot of shorts. Uh, Gary screened at a film festival circuit event a couple years ago, uh, and so uh, the need is very well done because it is genuinely so creepy. And uh, I, I just want to ask, how did this uh, project come about? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, thanks for saying it's creepy and scary. That's the intent behind it. Um, this project came about when uh, the writer of The Need, uh, Kenneth Darling, um, he reached out to me and introduced me to the New York City Midnight Writing Competition. Okay. And there was a screenplay one coming up for a short, and we had both written stories and then traded stories to read. Uh, and so when I was reading his story, I was just really engaging and I could visualize it kind of the entire time. And I knew that I wanted to make the need, which was that story into a short film. Okay. Um, and, you know, I approached Kenny about it and he was like, oh yeah, that'd be amazing. No one's ever asked me to do that before. Um, there were some aspects to the story that uh, didn't really elevate it into the horror realm where I wanted it to be. So I did add some things um for example the flashback scenes in the story um no spoiler alert but uh i uh kind of added those in there to kind of visually okay. tell the story the way that i wanted to and at the end i just hope that i didn't kubrick his king oh, yeah. and he said i didn't so i feel good about it <laughs> But well, that's so cool. I mean, and so was it sort of a moment, an instant eye opener where you're reading this and you're seeing the images and you're like, this this can easily be made into a film because I'm already seeing what I want. Is it was it like that or did you have pretty much? Yeah. Right like, off the bat. Did that um, image kind of diverge from the final product. Do you feel like you were able to capture that vision? I do. Yeah. And Kenny's given me a lot of feedback about it as well. Okay. So I, I feel that I was able to um, actually funny story is. The version you're seeing is the latest cut okay. where we actually shot something just this last August and placed it in there near the end of the film. Oh, and I thought that completed it. Um, before that, you know, there was about a year that went by and I had just always wished I had done this one thing and coming back to revisit it was nice. Okay, well, I'd love to hear that because, I mean, there's so many projects where people have that thing that they talk about, especially in the independent film world. They think, God, I wish I would have done that. So you actually went in. Uh, how much later was this final scene uh, versus the rest of it being filmed? About a year later. Okay. It's never too late. It's never too late, yeah. I love that. I mean, that's great advice. And uh, I feel like the way that it stands now, I didn't see the original cut, but there's a very good pacing, and it feels fully recognized. It feels like there's no missing pieces. It's a good start. It's a good end. Nice, concise chunk. And... and really a uh, unique aspect obviously the the, the premise uh, a disturbed individual with uh, proclivity let's just put it that way mm -hmm. um, that's been done before but there's the the I don't want to spoil anything but you know his partner that uh, his partners that talk to him that's uh, such an interesting aspect and it is that kind of the thing that jumped out uh, from you uh, with Kenny's script or it was yeah that that was actually one of the things I'm glad you touched on that um, in part of the writing competition they assign you, uh, some variables that you have to include in your story. Um, for this, one was a keepsake, uh, and then the other was a tormentor. Okay. And in the horror genre, and then um, can you forgive me? I can't remember what the other thing is you had to include, but I think the way those that he worked those things together, I was just able to visualize that as I was reading it, and again, just knew immediately this is something I wanted to to create. Well, I really love uh, how you went about that. And uh, talk to me a little bit about the makeup and costume design, because I mean, it's just 
so cool. There's the the dripping wet feet, you know, from the bathtub and the and the makeup. Who uh, was responsible uh, for that design? Yeah, uh, that is uh, Real Fiction Studios Michelle Munoz, who goes okay. by Michelle of the Dead. Awesome. And um, yeah, we I kind of chatted with makeup department about how I wanted these other uh, talent in the film to look, no spoiler alert, what they are or aren't. Um, and yeah, just I really think Michelle was able to achieve something special with the makeup on this where you know, I had some people I'm showing the movie to, they actually asked me if I added them in later as an okay, special yeah. effect. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, um, I didn't, but that you thought I could have done that uh, means makeup did a really good job. Totally. I mean, it is because it's the, if they feel like such a transformative presence. And I think the design strikes a balance halfway between kind of brutal and real, but like a little bit stylized. And I, I really uh, such a cool aspect of the film. Uh, and another thing that I wanted to highlight is uh, your lead actor who plays Danny. Uh, you elicit such great nuanced facial expressions. There's a lot of sequences where he's just looking and you see his eyes or scenes where he's in his bed and he's glancing over. Uh, neurotically to this empty pillow next to him. And I felt like it was just really well done, especially in a lot of spaces where there wasn't dialogue. How how was it working with uh, the actor who played Danny? And what was it like uh, on set eliciting these these uh, actions? Uh, Eric Petty is uh, played the lead character, okay. uh, da Davey. Oh, Davey. David or right. Davey, yeah. Uh, and um, Eric's great to work with. Um, he's really dedicated uh, character study. So if I... Ian and I will uh, kind of say to him, hey, Eric, this is really what we're going for with this character. Um, and even assign him some movies or television shows to take a look at. He'll go down and sit down and do the work and come prepared. Um, and then in, in some of those scenes where he had those really great facial expressions, uh, I was actually just calling out emotions to him. Wow. Yeah. So the, the classic kind of, you know, the, the trope of like, okay, now you're sad, now you're scared, now you're... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, it looks great, and uh, it's so cool to hear uh, the behind the scenes, because, you know, we, we see the movie Magic, and we just wonder, how are people doing this? I think it's valuable to hear. Um, uh, I also wanted to, to ask about this, and this is something that I personally am passionate about, is uh, sort of uh, regionally produced uh, movies that capture something authentic about that. So you're uh, Seattle-based. And this is obviously filmed in Seattle in the Washington area. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, if that uh, uh, was a part of this consciously, trying to capture that landscape. He's obviously walking by, uh, by maybe the sound and he's walking in rainy, dreary Seattle. Was there any, was that conscious or is that just your, your arena so you're filming there? What's the deal with that? A little bit of both. Um, it, it is my arena. So location wise, it's going to be, somewhere in Washington that's easy enough for cast and crew to get to right. on, you know, our shoestring budget. Um, but I also really wanted to, especially because there was music involved in this story, um, show the Seattle scene and some iconic shots and visiting like some iconic locations like Connor Byrne pub and Ballard um, for the folk singer scene. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, I love that. It does lend some authenticity with uh, so much media we consume comes out of the same few neighborhoods in uh, a certain a certain state down south. It's just uh, nice to see a diverse set of, of locations and kind of something in the atmosphere to feel. Um, so, Michael, you've made uh, quite a few shorts before. I'm curious, uh, did you learn anything or take anything new from this uh, uh, latest project? Always, yeah. I'm always learning something new, mostly centered around how would I do this better next time? Okay. Um, you know, I really only took, I've been messing around with films for a long time with friends and having fun and it's always still fun, but I've only really taken it more seriously probably since 2020. Okay. And so a lot of these things I'm doing, I'm really doing for the first time and just trying them out to see how they work. And then, yeah, a lot of times, well, I learned how not to do that. Let's, you know, revisit this idea, but improve upon it in the next project. So, and then everyone I work with too, I'm always picking up things that they do or have my ears open on set for collaborative ideas. Yeah. 
Well, I love that. And I feel like that's, that's maybe even more important in the independent arena where not everything's so set in stone and it's beneficial to learn from your cast and crew. You're going to have to wear a lot of hats no matter what you do. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, no one's just the director. There's right. always a lot going on. Yeah, um, I was the director and director of photography. And then I did a lot of the post stuff as well. So okay. absolutely uh, myself and many others wore plenty of hats on the totally. knee. Well, that's, that's cool to hear. Um, uh, so what's, what's next for you? Do you have any other shorts, short ideas, maybe a feature? Yeah. Uh, so I've written, uh, another short, which one of the things I learned from writing Gary and a few movies before that is just really flesh out the story, write it, rewrite it, write it, rewrite it some more, send it out for some critiques, take the, um, advice, rewrite it again. And so I've got this story and I've teamed up with EE e. Talent again uh, and, and some of the same crew um, that worked on and talent that are in the need as well um, that we've cast for our new film. So it's going under the title Movie A for now. Yeah. If you see anything on social media about it, um, we're going to be releasing the name probably uh, in early fall. Okay. Cool. We've already started production on it and we're pretty stoked on the way it's turning out. Excellent. Yeah. Um, the idea here story? is hopefully a proof of concept for a feature. Okay, excellent. And can you speak at all about the genre or anything? Or is that still a little it's bit? It's the horror story? genre, and I'm happy to share the log line. Absolutely. All right. So uh, after a sorry, after a brutal attack that leaves her boyfriend dead, uh, an injured young woman goes to stay with his parents, only to learn they are not what they seem. Oh, interesting. Okay. I like that, the sort of uh, mystery there. That's cool. Yeah. Very exciting. Okay, well, this is something that's uh, cooking right now, something that is seems to be uh, ramping up and getting into production. I can't wait to see uh, more about this. But um, is there any final words you'd like to share about the need? Um, thank you, Zayami, for the interview to Oregon Screams Festival, festival directors for the official selection. Uh, I'm coming down to partake, um, as will Kenny, the writer. So we're both going to be down in Portland for the, the screening, which is exciting. Um, and I'm just really excited for everybody to see this film. Excellent. Well, Michael, thank you so much for talking with me. I'm excited to uh, meet you down there. And uh, The Need is going to do very well, I think. I think it's going to light up the audience. It's such a great, interesting, creepy film. And uh, we need we need some stuff. There's a lot of horror comedy, a lot of horror action. We need the real creepy, uh, bone chilling horror. And uh, yeah, that's I funny. I, I always find that I'm coming in with the serious film in a sea of horror comedy. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we need that. We need that. I feel like yeah. that's that's kind of my favorite. And, uh, you know, you never know what the audience is going to react. Something like this. You yeah. might have some people walk out. But I think that's kind of I hope so. Yeah, I hope yeah. so. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, and I'll uh, see you soon.